All right, problem three of the practice problems in the Praxis 5165 study companion says that Jerry is 50 inches tall and growing at a rate of 1 24th inch per month. Okay. And Adam is 47 inches tall and growing at a rate of 1 8th inch per month. If they continue to grow at these rates for the next four years, after how many months will they be the same height? First comment. The rates at which they're growing are fractions with different denominators. Make your life easy and get a common denominator. Instead of thinking about Adam as growing at a rate of 1 8th inch per month, think about Adam as growing at a rate of 3 24th inches per month. So one dude's growing 1 24th of an inch, the other one's growing 3 24th of an inch. Adam is growing 3 24th minus 1 24th. In other words, 2 24th. In other words, 1 12th of an inch faster per month. Note that Adam is currently three inches shorter than Jerry. He's making up a 12th of an inch each month. He needs to make up three inches. How long is it gonna take him? Well, let's see, in 12 months, he'd make up a full inch. So in three of these 12 month periods, in other words, 36 months, he'd make up the entire three inches. The answer is C, 36 inches. I think the easiest way to solve this problem is to kind of just talk through it logically like I did here. This being a math test, some people probably take a more algebraic approach. You could say that Jerry's height as a function of time is equal to 50 plus 1 24th t maybe, where t represents months into the future. Whereas Adam's height as a function of t is 47 plus 1 8th t. What you want to know is what t will be equal to when Jerry's height is the same as Adam's height. In other words, solve 50 plus 1 24th t equals 47 plus 1 8th t for t. Well, let's see, maybe you'd isolate the variable. So subtract 47 from both sides. You're left with the 3 over on this side. Subtract 1 24th t from both sides. And I'd have 1 8th t minus 1 24th t which maybe I'd rewrite as t over 8 minus t over 24, at which point maybe I'd recognize subtracting fractions, I need a common denominator. So I'd multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by 3 to get 3t over 24 minus t over 24. Now I can subtract these fractions. I have a common denominator of 24. I write that one time. 3 of these t's minus 1 of these t's leaves me with 2 of these t's. I got 3 is equal to 2t over 24. I can reduce the fraction on the right to call it t over 12. I can multiply both sides by 12 and get 36 is equal to t. I think it's a lot more straightforward going through option 1, but if you really like algebra, you could do option 2. However, I'd argue that if you're doing option 2 and you've gotten this far, might as well take advantage of your calculator. Right, might as well come over here and hit y equals and graph these two functions, 50 plus 1 24th times my variable t. I'll hit this x t theta n key. I know it looks like it's 1 divided by 24x, but it's not. It's 1 divided by 24, pause, x. Similarly, my next function will be 47 plus 1 8th t, which in the interest of writing it just how it looks, I could write as 1 divided by 8t. Or if you were worried about it, you could have written it as 47 plus t divided by 8. Really, it doesn't matter. The second line is identical to the third line because of the order of operations that my calculator assumes. Anyways, now that I have these functions, I can just take a look at the graph and figure out when these guys cross. Uh-oh, it doesn't look like they cross. Yeah, what's going on here is that my calculator shows me my graph where the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates range from negative 10 to positive 10. So answers like 36 aren't going to show up on this graph. No problem, just hit the zoom key here. You got lots of options. You could just zoom out if you want, or you could trust that your calculator is smart enough to figure it out on its own and do zoom fit where it guesses what the window should be. Unfortunately, my calculator wasn't smart enough. It zooms so that I can see the two functions, but I still can't see their intersection. I can mess with the zoom some more, maybe just zoom out this time. It asks me where I want to zoom out. Well, why don't I move the cursor way the hell over here and see what ends up happening. There's one graph. Here's my other graph. I can finally see their intersection of my answer. I just need to know what the answer is right here. Well, one option is to move the cursor way over there. It takes a little while. It's a little bit annoying. So kind of ballpark where the intersection is. I don't know. Hard to tell. 
somewhere in here maybe. The X value is 35.5 or so. Oh, 36 is an answer. That's pretty close to 35.5. I bet that's the right answer. Another option is just to look at where 24, 30, 36, and 42 show up on your graph. The way you can do that is by hitting this trace key and then just type in 24, enter, and it'll put your cursor on whichever function you have highlighted when X is equal to 24. Clearly, that's not the intersection of these two lines. So maybe I'd instead try X equals 30. I hit enter. We're still not quite at the intersection, although we're getting closer. I hit X equals 36. Oh, that one looks pretty good. That looks like it's right at the intersection. What about 42? No, that's way over here. That's past the intersection. 36 must be my right answer. Another option that might be a little bit quicker is instead of using the trace feature here, use the calculate feature, which is above the trace key in blue. So instead of hitting trace, I'm gonna hit second and then trace. That takes me into the calculate menu. And here I can figure out all sorts of stuff, including intersections. So if I go down to five where it says intersect, what it says is what's your first curve. So I can cycle through my different curves here. I got Y1, 50 plus 1 24th X, Y2, 47 plus 1 eighth X, and then Y3, which is the same as 47 plus 1 eighth X, I just wrote it a different way. So one of my two curves should be Y1. I'll select Y1 and hit enter. Now it asks me for my second curve. It doesn't matter whether I say Y2 or Y3, because again, they're the same curve. So I'll just say Y2. It then asks me to guess because what it does with the algorithm is it starts out at a given point and then gets closer and closer to the correct point from there. It doesn't really matter what you guess, it'll figure it out. Maybe I'm guessing that my intersection's right here. Hit enter, it thinks for a minute, it says the intersection is when X equals 36. By the way, the Y coordinate at that point is 51 and a half, but you don't care about that. You don't care about how tall these kids are when they're the same height. You care about how long it'll take for them to become the same height. That's the X or T coordinate, which is 36. Not to beat this thing to death, but if you didn't get this intuitive appeal and you don't like functions or graphing them, there's still a pretty easy way to get your answer. Just keep track of these kids' height. We got Jerry and we got Adam. When time is zero, Jerry's 50 inches tall and Adam's 47 inches tall. What about when time is equal to 24? They're gonna have the same height. Well, let's see, Jerry started out at 50 inches tall and he grows a 24th of an inch every month. So in 24 months, he'll grow 24 of these 1 24ths of an inch. In other words, he'll grow one full inch. He'll now be 51 inches tall. What about Adam? He started out at 47 inches tall and he's growing at a rate of 1 8th inch per month. So in 24 months, he'll grow 24 eighths. 24 eighths is equal to three. If you don't like dividing numbers, pull out your calculator. He'll be the original 47 inches plus three more inches. He'll be 50 inches tall. The answer is not 24 because in 24 months, they do not have the same height. One was 51 inches tall, the other is 50 inches tall. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe at time 30, things will work out. How tall will Jerry be? Well, he's the original 50 inches plus 30 of these when you hear of in a word problem, it typically means times 20 fourths, one divided by 24. Jerry's 51.25 inches tall. Is Adam 51.25 inches tall? I sure hope so, because then that's my answer. Well, let's see, Adam is 47 and think plus 30 of, think multiply, these one eighth inches because he's growing at an eighth of an inch per month. Adam is 50.75 inches tall. Bummer, they're not the same height. 30 is not the right answer. Maybe 36 is the right answer. Jerry started out 50 inches tall. 36 24ths is the same as 1.5. Don't believe me, use your calculator. So he's 51.5 inches tall. Adam started out at 47. 36 eighths is the same as four and a half. So he's 47 plus four and a half. He's 51.5 inches tall. After 36 months, these two people are the same height. Same answer we got with option one and option two. If you're really paying attention, you might note that they told us this thing about four years, but that never came into play. Yeah, that was kind of mean. I guess that's just there to sort of mess with you. I mean, realistically, kids grow faster and you're not gonna continue growing at these rates for your whole life. So to make this problem a little bit more realistic, they probably should cap the amount of time at which you're growing at this rate. However, that never comes into play in our calculations because four years is 48 months and we never considered any amount of times more than 48. 
42 was the maximum. If we went through all this process and got an answer of like, I don't know, 50, well, then it would be a trick question. They'd be messing with you because we don't know the kid's height after 50 months because 50 months is more than four years and we don't know their growth rate after four years. All that to say, for the sake of this problem, you can completely ignore this four-year thing.